Welcome everyone. How are you today? I'm doing a special video requested by one of my viewers. And uh, thank you, my dearest. What a great idea. She wanted me to do a, a goddess video regarding the 13 moons cycles. The goddess is involved with the 13 moon cycles and I was grateful for that concept because really, you know, how I encourage us following the moon cycles and, you know, trying to not so much the Gregorian calendar, but we need to kind of elevate from that and uh, male or female, we need to embrace the goddesses and um, the goddess and um, take it to that next level. So great request. And ironically, when I was doing my research here, got it laid out as much as I can, but um, I kind of, you know, did some research and I was looking up lunar goddesses and from the Wikipedia here, but um, literally what they were listing was 48 and 12 of them are in what I'm going to do today, but there's many more, but 12 of them are involved in what I'm doing today and that's Artemis, Astarte, Bassett, Diana, Diana, Hecate, Inanna, Kuan Yin, Luna, Mawu, the Mayan moon goddess, which she's in here, I forget her name right now, the Madonna, Queen Mary, and the triple goddess. So there's more lunar uh, goddesses to come, and actually, um, I want to work when I'm going to do another video just because I'm all pumped up with a lunar goddesses and the lunar gods too. So we're gonna make that a male-female combo. I think it'll be good. But anyway, I've set up my altar here and I do have my goddess book and I have my beautiful Yamaya here representing the goddess ocean. But this is my Suzanne Sedan book. I have brought it out before, so we're gonna work with that. And I've got my goddess cards here and I'm also gonna work with um, the goddess guidance and I've got Dana, the high priestess there, okay? And this is the high priestess from Susan Sedan Boulay. All righty. So we've got the power on the table. And I'm just going to go with it. If you notice, I have also my 13 Moon Almanac of Synchronicity, th three of those books there. Um, the way that I was explaining how the Mayan calendar works through the 13 moons. And um, also I brought up my energy for the lady of the beast, the goddesses and her sacred animals. So, you know, I wanted to prep my table that they know I'm on board to bring this in. And also for some of you, I don't know, if I used to get the Llewellyn sign books, the moon signs and um, wrote here, crystal grids back in the day. But, um, you know, you can see everything on the internet. And for some of you that aren't um, as metaphysically apt, you know, go to the um, Farmer's Almanac site, it's wonderful. And you know, and they don't speak too much metaphysical, but they do follow the moon cycles as gardeners. They they know what to do. So, you know, just just tap that energy, okay? But I did wanna open up with um, a basic 13 moon calendar primer is what I found on the net here. And um, it, it has to do with the 13 moon almanac the Zolkin calendar of the Maya, okay? And the natural cycles of time are the day. The earth revolves on its axis to create day and night. The moon. The moon revolves around the earth through its cyclical phases. The cycle of the moon from new moon to new moon is called a synodic cycle. It is 29.5 days in length. The sidereal lunar cycle Measuring the moon from where it appears in the same place is in the sky is 27.1 days in length. So 28 days is the average lunar cycle, giving us 13 moons in a year, okay? And the year the earth revolves around the sun in 365 days. So we know about that, okay? And then um, it, it continues. I don't want to, you know, make this... I know this video is not going to be a short one, my friends, but this is for information and education, okay? And I think it's a it's wonderful, wonderful concept. 
All righty. So, and we also know that it reads here, to find the spiritual aspects of time, we turn to the heavens. The brightest star in the sky is not a star, but the planet Venus, which we know that. And the cycle of the planet Venus is a 260-day cycle. The ancient Maya referred to the 200 day cycle as the Zolkin or the sacred calendar. According to them, it is made up of smaller cycles of 13 and 20 days, each turning together to create a 260 day cycle. This is an ever repeating cycle, okay, just like the day, the moon, and the year. And then the brightest actual star in the sky is the star Sirius, and from the perspective of the Earth, the sun appears to move across the sky against the background of stars. When the sun rises with the brightest star, Sirius, it begins the cycle of the year. That day corresponds to July 26 on the current calendar. Therefore, the start of this calendar is linked to a cosmic event. So that's why the Mayan calendar, excuse me, the Mayan calendar um, begins on July 26. That begins their new year. So, you know, that's, that's another aspect why I think, you know, of course we have to keep our appointments by the Gregorian calendar, but we don't have to, you know, put that in stone. There's so many new beginnings all the time is what I'm trying to say, which are attached to the cosmos, okay? And our bodies are also coated with the natural cycles of time. Men and women are cycling on a 20-day, 20 28-day cycle known as the biorhythm. We have 13 joints to our bodies, which provide us with movement and correspond to the 13 tones. We have 20 fingers and toes, which also corresponds to the 20 tribes. We are the embodiment of natural sacred time. Since there are 13 tones in the sacred calendar and 13 moons per solar year, the moons take on the names and qualities of the 13 tones. Okay, so... I've already, um, so we're getting some, of, you know, if you don't understand this first part, no pressure, we're, we're, we're going to figure it out as we continue, okay? But I've already brought out cards to reflect the goddesses that are involved in each month, okay? So I've brought them out here, and some I could find in, out of decks, but some I couldn't, so you might have to skip a, two, a, skip a few. And then after I go through all the goddesses involved, then I'm going to pick from this deck right here, and I'm going to pick nine, six, three, and narrow it down to the one. Okay? And that will be our reading. We'll see which major cosmic goddess wants to come through from this group of cards. All right? So, okay, let us continue here. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of research, but it was very positive. All right, so we're going to work with the goddesses, okay? And so it begins with the seasons of the moons and the moon cycles. And the first month, um, or the first scenario here, the first uh, moon cycle is called the cold moon. And in the Mayan, they call that the moon of purpose. And it has to deal with Aquarius, and it's also called a prophet's moon, and it's um, magnetic in tone for the Mayan calendar, okay? And I'm just going to open up a little bit slow and then we'll move faster because then you'll get what I'm saying. And the first month is um, January to February and just like uh, in uh, January you can be a Capricorn and an Aquarius for the month of January, okay? So you see how even though your sun sign might be different, it does reflect that month. And the correspondences are the tarot card for this um, cold moon is the star. The herbs are holy thistle, nuts, and cones. The colors are white, lavender, blue, violet, indigo, and black. And the stones or crystals corresponding are the garnet, onyx, jet, chrysoprase, not sure what that is, C-H-R-Y-S-O-P-R-A-S-E, chrysoprase, and rose quartz. And the animals are bear, fox, coyote. And the goddesses are, which um, I'll have to stand up now to read all this for you guys, okay? Because I want to make sure that we get this right. All right. So, and the goddesses representing for this cold moon, whether this reflects you too for your birth time, is Freya, 
Okay, Freya, and she is um, bold. Unleash your adventurous side, take risk and be daring. Okay, and she also is, is Inanna, but I don't have a card for Inanna, but I will show you. Inanna was a Sumerian um, goddess, and she's very powerful, okay? she um, She's really what you call a badass, okay? So we want to give some shine to Inanna, but I won't read only that. And then we have Saravati, okay? Saravati, and here it reads, express yourself through creative activities. She represents the arts. Alrighty, beautiful that she is. Okay, and and Hera, and this is the goddess Hera representing here by Suzanne Sedon Boulay. Alright, and you see she works with the moon too. Okay, and there's Hera, which we're not going to read all these right now, but we'll come back to it when I do, when I shuffle the cards. And the medicine for this time of this cold moon, cold moon, moon of purpose is awakening, envisioning, beginning, and conceiving, rest, protection, and it, and also it uh, harnesses the um, Sabbath of Imbolc, and Imbolc, I love doing all those Sabbaths, you understand, so I'm really looking forward to that, and that's going to be February 1st, and just to begin real quick, also on January 31st is another, our second new moon for January. Uh, Venus goes direct. Uh, we've got the Chinese zodiac coming in uh, with the horse, the wooden horse starting their new year. So the energies at the end of this month are crazy. And this is all going to, and in bulk um, represents also new beginnings and fresh new starts. So it's important for us to now recognize that you know we can always think that there's a new beginning okay and and really all these energies are so powerful and if you are an aquarius people line up with this energy this is because it's hitting your your time but you know that's why it's always important you always can think you have another day to start over all right don't have to think it's january 1st all righty now we're going to the second um moon cycle and we have here, oh, hold on a second. Oh, the creative power, that's right. The creative power for this cold moon, uh, moon of purpose is unify. And the action is to attract, okay? Now we go to the second um, season here, of, or the second moon, and it's called the storm moon. And this is the moon of challenge for the Maya wisdom. And it's Pisces has to deal with Pisces, and that's the healer moon. And the tone, the Mayan tone for this is lunar, all righty? And it's with the months of February and March. Again, if you were born at those times, you know who you are, Pisces. And the correspondence is the tarot is the high priestess, and I am, my sun sign is Pisces, so I brought up my um, Pisces goddess here, and that's Neptune to the left there, to her right shoulder. So we know we've got the high priestess here for Pisces. And the herbs are balm of Gilead, hyssop, myrrh, and sage. The colors are light, blue, violet, aquamarine. And the stones are amethyst, jasper. The animals are otter, eagle, and unicorn. <laughs> I thought that was so cute because I'd never recognized that before, that the unis, you know, are involved with the Pisces uh, lunar cycle. And um, the goddesses are Bridget, and um, I love Bridget, and that's another reason why I do uh, love my Imbolc, because she is the goddess that represents Imbolc, and that also brings in the High Priestess, okay? The High Priestess is very involved in Imbolc. So we have Bridget, and we have Kuan Yin, goddess of compassion, and she's sitting here lovingly on my table right now. So we have Kuan Yin, and release judgments about yourself and others, and focus on the love and light that is within everyone. Thank you, Kuan Yin. And, um, and we also have goddess Diana, and this is from the Susan Sedon Boulay deck. Okay, goddess Diana. And because there was another one that I had in the goddess guidance deck, I pulled this Diana card out and like I said I will pick a uh, nine cards to narrow it down to one so we have two chances to pick out Diana goddess Diana 
and it's also with goddess Aphrodite. Okay, so we've got the Venus power here. Alrighty, beautiful. And again, another Aphrodite card that I was able available to pull out. So here we go. Okay, so that is for the storm moon, Pisces healer's moon, uh, tone and lunar, and the medicine of this moon is rising energy, purification, new growth, honoring and forgiving yourself, self-love, accepting responsibility, planning for the future. And the creative power is polarized. And the action is to stabilize. Okay? So for all you Pisces out there, that's what we've got going on for you. Now the third, um, moon in this cycle is called the seed moon and this is the moon of service per the Zulkin and its um, tone is electric and it's with Aries the infant's moon and this has to deal with March and April for all of you born under Aries and the correspondences for the tarot is the fool card the herbs are broom yellow yellow dock an Irish moss, the colors are pale green, red violet, the stones are also aquamarine, bloodstone and fluorite, the animals are cougar, hedgehog and boar, and the goddesses are Astarte, and I didn't have a card for Astarte, but she was in my book here, so this is the goddess Astarte, just to give you guys a little vis visualization of how Suzanne Sedon paints her, painted her. And she's pretty a cool goddess. I wasn't familiar with her. That's Astarte. Um, but just to read a few sentences here, Astarte is an ancient Phoenician great mother goddess, also known as Astareth or Ashtoreth. She is related to both Isis and Aphrodite. So uh, she's considered a queen of heaven. So I wanted to highlight that. So that's a start date. And then we have Minerva. All righty. Another goddess to, for all you Aries uh, sun signs, here we have her coming in for this moon season. And then we have Luna. Oh, no, 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 Luna. I didn't have Luna, but Luna's the Roman goddess, okay? And we know what Luna pretty much, she represents the sun, all right? I mean, excuse me, the moon. The moon, I'm all caught up, people. And so my Luna is on board here for um, the month of March and April. And then we have Artemis. This is the next goddess that's also involved, okay? So we have Artemis, and I did have a second card, considering her the guardian, all righty? And then we'll see who comes through at the end. And the medicine wisdom for this seed moon, moon of service, from March and April, Aries is burst of new energy, growing, exploring, learning, inner child work, new beginnings, balance of light and dark, Ostara and the spring equinox. So, you know, again, heavy medicine, my friends, and the creative power is to activate and the action is to bond, okay? Then we go to the next moon, 28-day moon, and it's called the planting moon, the moon of form. And this has to deal with the Taurus, and that's also called Earth Mother's Moon. And it has to deal with April and May for all of you born as a Taurus. And the correspondence is, as the tarot is the magician. The herbs are basil, chives, dragon's blood, geranium. The colors are crimson, red, and gold. The stones are ruby, garnet, and rose quartz. The animals are bear, wolf, and hawk. I love all those animals. I thought that was cool. And the goddesses are um, Hestia, which was the Greek a version of the Roman Vesta. So I do have Vesta here, okay? And she has to deal with the home and the hearth. And then there's um, Ceres, they called it. And Ceres is a Roman goddess of agriculture, grain crops, fertility, and motherly relationships. 
and there's a seven day festival for her in April. And um, she also is, uh, the other side is Dem Demeter, okay, Demeter. And all their siblings are Hera, Hattis, Poseidon, and Zeus. And the medicine, let's see. Okay. Ishtar. Let's see. Hold on. Okay. And then we have Ishtar. Here we have Ishtar. And that's the goddess painted by Suzanne Sedon Belay. And we also have, I have another Ishtar here. And it's called Boundaries. And then we have the goddess Hathor. Alrighty, and this is how Suzanne Sedan Belay depicted Hathor. Alrighty, and then we have Hathor, and she's an Egyptian goddess. Again, so she's on board. And we have Venus coming through. Beautiful. Goddess or sub Venus. And also Bast is involved in this month for or this cycle, the Taurus cycle, April, May. Okay. And because I have another card of Bast, we have the, it's called Independent here. Alrighty, so these are the goddesses for you guys, Taurus related. And the medicine, wisdom is energy into creating and producing change, self-reliance, tempering emotional flare-ups. You know you Tauruses can do that. Taking advantage of opportunities. And your Sabbath is Beltane, another wonderful festival. And the creative power is define, and the action is to measure. Okay, very good. Now we go into the fifth moon cycle here, 28 days, and that's called the flower moon. And for the Mayan uh, wisdom, it's called the moon of radiance. And this has to deal with the Gemini, um, and it's also called a scribe's moon. And the Mayan tone for this moon is called overtone. And this has to do with May and June for all of you Geminis born at those times there, within those months. And the correspondences are the tarot card for the Geminis, the lovers, the herbs are the elder, elder, mint, rose, mugwort, and thyme. And the colors are green, brown, and pink. And the stones are emerald, malachite, amber, carnelian, and moonstone. The animals are cats, lynx, leopard, swan, and dove. And uh, the goddesses is Maia, which I wasn't too familiar with her, but she's very powerful. It's spelled M-A-I-A. -I, -A. I have no picture of her within books or cards, but M-A-I-A -A is her name, and she's a Greek goddess, and she's one of the Pleiades and the mother of Hermes, the Olympic god, god son of Zeus. And I believe Hermes also relates to Mercury, okay, the Roman Mercury. And the, um, also the goddesses to deal with her is Venus, or this month, rather, Gemini, for the month of you Gemini people. It's also Venus is in the house for you guys. And Aphrodite, okay, because they're pretty much the same. So one's Greek, one's um, Roman. And then we have Artemis, which has already come through. Artemis for you guys, okay. And Bast, all right. So whoosh, they're in the deck. So we'll see what comes out for you all. And the medicine wisdom is creation, love, intuition, connection with the divine, connection with nature, sexuality, and sensuality. And the creative power is to empower, and the action is to command. Okay, so I think you Geminis have a nice setup right there. Now we go to the sixth moon, 28 day, and that's called the Honeymoon, H-O-N-E-Y, Honeymoon, and it is the moon of equality. And this has to deal with you cancers out there, cancer. And it's also known as the Sea Mother's Moon. And the Mayan tone is rhythmic. 
and this has to deal with the months of June and July and the correspondences are the tarot card is the moon number 18 in the tarot the herbs are meadowsweet vervain parsley and skullcap I really am trying to learn about herbs people because I don't know too much about these the colors are orange golden green the stones are topaz agate fluorite and pearl the animals are honeybee butterfly frog and peacock and the goddesses are the butterfly maiden we have her here as transformation and Siridwin, which unfortunately I don't have a picture of Siridwin or she was in the book, but she's a Welsh, Welsh Celtic goddess of rebirth, transformation, and inspiration. And we have also, let's see, an Ishtar. I think we set Ishtar. Oh no, I think Ishtar I put in here already. And the medicine wisdom is contentment and the Lithia, Lithia a Sabbath. The summer solstice, time of light, decision making, strengthen and reward, positive qualities of oneself, and the creative power is to organize, and the action is to balance. Okay, so that's what we have for you all here. All righty, and then we I see something here. Okay, I think I'm trying to trying to keep everything organized, people. Now we go to the seventh cycle of the moon, or the seventh cycle, and we have the hay moon, H-A-Y, hay moon. And this is the moon of attunement, and the sign is Leo, and it's also called the king's moon. And the tone, the Mayan tone is resonant, and this has to deal, uh, the Leos deal with the months of July and August. And the correspondences are, the tarot card is the emperor, and the herbs are honeysuckle, lemon balm, and jasmine. And the colors are green, ocean blues, and coral. And the stones are ocean jasper, lepidolite, and aquamarine. The animals are crab, turtle, dolphin, and whale. And the goddesses are Juno uh, and Hera. Juno is the Roman goddess and Hera was the Greek, but they represent the same energies. And um, Hera's in here already in the stack that we've looked at. And we have Sulis, which is a Celtic uh, life-giving goddess. And here she is around the bodies of water. Okay, so there's Sulis. So she's in the deck here. And we have Nipithis which I didn't have a card for her or a drawing in Suzanne Sedon's book, but um, Nepethys was an, is an Egyptian goddess, and her parents were Jeb and Nut, and she's the goddess of death and uh, lamentation. And her siblings uh, were Isis and Osiris, and Horus and Set, and her offspring was Anubis. So she's a pretty powerful uh, deity for the uh, Egyptian pantheon and the medicine wisdom is peak of summer relaxed energy preparing dream work and the Sabbath is Lugnasta and the creative power is to channel and the action is to inspire okay and then we continue with the eighth moon and that is called the harvest moon and that is the moon of integrity. And this has to do with the sign of Virgo, the weaver's moon. And the Mayan tone is galactic. And we have the months for the Virgos are August through September. And uh, we have the correspondences are the tarot card is the empress. And the herbs are chamomile, St. John's wort, fennel, and rue. The colors are yellow and gold. The stones are tiger's eye, carnelian, red jasper. The animals are the lioness, the phoenix, and the hawk. And the goddesses are Gaia herself here. This is the picture of Gaia. 
Suzanne Sedon Boulay's artwork and Demeter, which we have Demeter here. Okay, let me see if she's well, is it sideways? Let's see. Oh, these cards are some of them are kind of dark. I'm trying to think, I think it goes that way. Okay, that's the image that she uh, painted for Demeter. And we have Corn Mother, which is not a goddess that I had an image of in my cards or this book. But she is a Native American um, goddess, and she deals with agriculture and is responsible for the origin of corn or maize or maize, how Spanish we say maize. Okay, and her, the medicine wisdom for this harvest moon, moon of integrity, is gathering, gratitude, health and wellness, friendships, bounty, and motherhood. The creative power is to harmonize, and the action is to model. So model yourselves, people, to uh, be the best you can be. All right. And then we have the ninth moon, and that's called the singing moon. And uh, for the Mayan old uh, calendar here, we got the moon of intention. And it's with the Libras. And it's also known as a dancer's moon, and that's solar in tone. And for the Libras, we are in the months of September and October. And the correspondences are, the tarot card is strength card, major arcana number eight. To me, sometimes it's 11, but I think it should be eight because it's pretty much always depicted with a lion. And since the Leos are the month of August, that's how I look at it. But it is strength is the tarot card. The herbs are copal, funnel, wheat, and valerian. The colors are brown, yellow, green, and yellow. The stones are citrine, peridot, tiger's eye, olivine, and amethyst. The animals are the snake, the jackal, and the sparrow. The goddesses are Ceres, which she's in here already, Lady Isis, and this is Isis and Osiris in this image of Suzanne Sedon Boulay. But we have Lady Isis, Goddess Isis, and we have her again twice. Because I have two cards for her, so we're going to see who comes through. We got a second chance for the Isis card. And Freya. And Freya's already in this stack. Okay? And the medicine wisdom pertaining to this um, singing moon, moon of intention for the Libra our rest after labor, the Sabbat Mabon, the autumn equinox, balance of light and dark, organize, clean out mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual clutter. And, um, you know, we know Libra is all about the balance, and we all should really highlight that last sentence, balance of light and dark, organize, clean out mentally physical, emotional, spiritual clarity. That's very important, my friends. And the creative power is the pulse, and the action is to realize. Realize. Okay, now we go to the 10th uh, moon, 28-day cycle, and we're in the blood moon. And this is the moon of manifestation. And it has to deal with the Scorpio sign, which is also called the witch's moon. And the Mayan tone is planetary. And this has to deal with the months of October and November. And the correspondences, the tarot card for this um, blood moon is the hermit. The herbs are the penny royal, sage, mugwort, catnip, thyme, and rosemary. The colors are black, white, orange, and red. The stones are opal, black tourmaline, beryl, and fluorite. The animals are the stag, ram, scorpion, and crow. And, and you know, all these are just sort of basics. You know, I know even in the um, of Farmer's Almanac, some of these moons are named different. And, you know, there's so many stones, sometimes they add different stones. But this is just the basic, okay, my friends? 101, <laughs> goddess 13 moon cycle. Okay, and the goddess is... is uh, Baba Yaga, which I had not an image for Baba Yaga, but Baba Yaga is a Russian goddess of harvest, rest, providence, 
thankfulness and cycles and she symbolizes with corn, wheat, rye, and wildflowers. She's a grandmother figure. Then we have Persephone. And here we have Persephone as her image, goddess Persephone. And the fates, um, the fates are uh, three witches and um, they were highlighted in Shakespeare Macbeth. So I didn't have images for them. And then the Morrigan which is an Irish goddess of battle, strife, and sovereignty. And I also didn't have an image for her in my cards or in this book. But there's many online if you want to look it up, if you are, you know, Scorpio-related and you want to look further for these goddesses that were being, being mentioned here. And the medicine wisdom is inner cleanse, purifying your spirit, honoring the cycles of life, death, rebirth, Karma and reincarnation, connection to spiritual realm is thin, and we know that because that's the Sabbath of Samhain, right? Samhain, how you pronounce it, people, but that's when you know, we can easily talk to our ancestors in the spirit world, but well, we can pretty much talk to them all the time, but I'm just saying that's when the veil is the thinnest and it's, you have more in, more power to invoke your ancestors. And the creative power is perfect, and the action is to produce. Okay, getting there, people. We're on the love 28 day cycle now, and we're going for the dark moon, which is the moon of liberation. The sign is Sagittarius, which is also known as the shaman's moon, and the tone is spectral. Um, and if the months are November and December. And this correspondences are the tarot card is death. The herbs are grains of paradise, rabena, borage, blessed thistle. The colors are orange, red, sea green. The stones are topaz, hyacinth, lapis lazuli, rose quartz. The animals are crocodile, owl, and goose. The goddesses are Siridwen. Again, I don't have an image of Siridwen, so if you want to look her up, if you're a Sagittarius or you are going to do something on the dark moon, uh, it's Siridwen. Mawu, we have Mawu, which is about Mother Earth here. Okay, we have Mawu, and then we have Hecate, which I don't have an image because she wasn't in my book or in the cards, but Hecate is the Greek moon magic witchcraft, knowledge of herbs and poisonous plants. Necromancy and sorcery. And necromancy, if uh, you all don't know, that represents when you can talk to spirits uh, and they um, help you see the future. So that's why it's important for us to tap the spirit world, my friends, okay? And many of them, we want to pass to the light, but you do have a connection. They can give you information towards the future because they're there, all right? And the medicine for the Sagittarius... Um, Dark moon, shaman's moon is honoring our ancestors, releasing the past, transformation, gratitude, reflecting on the lessons of the past year, and shadow work. Shadow work. And the creative power is to dissolve. D-I-S-S-O-L-V-E, dissolve. And the action is to release. Then we go into the um, 12th moon here is the wolf moon. The moon of cooperation, the sign of Capricorn, it's also known as the grandmother's moon, and its Mayan tone is crystal. And this deals with the months of December and January, and the correspondences, the, the tarot card is the sun, the herbs are holly, fir, and mistletoe. The colors are blood red, blood red, blood red, white, silver, forest green, the stones are turquoise, blue topaz, black tourmaline, hematite, the animals are beer, beer, <laughs> it said beer deer, it's bear deer, wolf, robin, snowy owl, the goddesses are Ixchiel, Ich Ixchiel, Ich and she's a Mayan goddess, and we also have Kali, all right, and you know what Kali's about, love her. We have Kali, okay. Hathor's already in the deck, 
Hecates we've been talked about, and Frigg, F-R-I-G-G, -G, and it's also can be pronounced F-R-I-G-G-A, and she's a major North uh, paganism. She's known to have been the wife of Odin. And the medicine wisdom is hibernation, rebirth of the light, darkness, connecting with loved ones, the Yule, the winter solstice, darkness, turning within, and shadow work. And the creative power is to dedicate. And the action is to universalize. And the last and final moon that they bring up here relating to the tarot is the blue moon. And we just had a blue moon back in August of 2013. The beginning of the month and the last day of the month of August, we had a blue moon, which is when you have two full moons in one um, month. And the next blue moon won't be till July 31st, 2015, because I wanted to know if there would be one for 2014. So we won't see another one. And that's why we want to pray to Luna, you know, each month to say, by the time July 2015 comes, I want to, you know, attain my dreams or my miracles. And it'll happen, I'm sure, before, but this is what we want because powerful, those blue moons. And um, the tone is cosmic, okay? And the tarot card is the tower. The colors are blue, indigo, white, silver. The stones are spirit quartz, aqua aura quartz. The animals are the dolphin, raven, unicorn, and owl. Now you see how heavy duty those animals are for the blue moon? I loved when I saw that. That's what you call, I call, awesomeness. The goddesses are Oya. So next blue moon, you know who I'll be calling on. <laughs> my, my fiery woman herself from the... Um, Orisha Pantheon, uh, Nuit, which is an Egyptian sky goddess depicted as naked, covered with stars, and she, unfortunately, I don't have an image of her. And the medicine is about spontaneity, sudden changes, and soul connections. And we know that Luna is the closest celestial being to our Earth, so we have to believe it is very important to honor her in many, many ways, okay? All right, my friends, well, this is already a 40, oh, my Lord help me, but I want to pick it. I knew this was going to be a long, a long video, but we're learning today, okay? This isn't just picking cards. We're just literally trying to get us on board on making sure that this wisdom of the cycles of the moon, and this has no gender. This is for all of us, okay, to jump on, jump on board. All right, now, you know what? Actually, I'm going to turn my face because... I can see some of the, I don't want to see anything, so I'm going to pick nine, and then we'll take it down to the six, to the three, and the numero uno card, okay? All right, and blessing the goddesses as I shuffle to myself. Thanking them for what they do for us and how these energies we're finally awakening to embrace the goddess energy and um, keep balance, the yin and the yang. And may we bring peace and prosperity to this earth and healing, especially healing. It's what we need. We need a healing. We need to take back our power and move forward in peace and love and shine. Okay. All right, I've got the nine cards, and I'm just going to flip them real quick, and then we'll keep going. All right, we have Artemis in the house, okay? Artemis, this is so long, I'm just going to keep moving. We have the Mayan lady, which I'm very grateful because I brought up the energies of the calendar, so she has come through. Yeah. Okay, and Freya, the first one came through, being bold. All righty, we like that. And we do have the Saravati, the arts, beautiful Hindu goddess, Aphrodite, Venus, collective in town, beautiful, Venus in the house, and my Isis, 
our Isis and Osiris. Beautiful. I, she is Venus and Isis, and they both are on the table. I pray, thank you, and love you, and Ishtar, providing us with the boundaries that we need. You know, people, it's important. And Brigitte, oh my God, I'm going to bless her for this inbox, no doubt about it. My high priestess has come through. And Diana, love her. Oh, I love her too. Okay, I'm going to turn my face again because I don't want to see what I'm doing because I, I, I can tell by the images what the card is. So I don't want to go that route. We're going for the last six. Okay. And align with your goddess and work on whatever herbs you feel that, you know, were for your month of birth there. The cycles are, every single other cycle is positive. Okay, and we have six. And they are Artemis again. Okay, power beauty. There we go. You know, Artemis, she holds that, um, uh, the uh, bow and arrow there, but she hardly hurts anybody. She's just saying, I'm bold enough to take this arrow and <laughs> aim at the target, but she doesn't. But we've got Fred. She would. She'd pull that arrow. I'm sure she would. And Ishtar again. Okay, boundaries are talking. Alrighty, see, this is why I wanted to do it this way. Okay, people, that's what's saying on my table. Maintain your boundaries. Only align with the people who, you know, aren't deceiving you. And, and again, make sure you just be with like-minded people. And my Diana has come through. Beautiful. Well, intriguing. Um, Artemis and Diana, they're the same. They're One's the Roman, and I believe one's the Greek. Well, I want to keep on moving because this video is long, my friends. This is the longest video I've ever done, but I wanted to. And Isis and Osiris. <gasps> Powerful. Gorgeous. And the Venus Aphrodites are in the house. We got the love and the money. Okay, the abundance. Beautiful. And we must follow Venus. Okay, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, down to the three. I'm turning my head because I really don't. Like I said, I, I, I know these cards and I don't want to look at them. Okay, down to two and three. One more here. All righty, let's do that one. Okay, and we have Aphrodite is with us. My Venus is in the house. I've been talking to Venus for two years, people. Two years. Since that June 5th, 6th, 20, was it 12? When Venus did that transit. And Diana again. Beautiful. Oh, and I could tell you something about this goddess, but I don't have the time. And Isis and Osiris has come through again. Beautiful. Oh, my God. Well, you know what? I know one card's big, so, you know, I'll feel it in my hand. But anyway, my friends, I don't want to take too much time in reading this. But Venus is in the house. Do not deny. Okay, Aphrodite, the goddess of love, is going to be with us. Watch her in the skies, okay? Watch for her, just like you're going to continue to watch for Luna. And then we have Diana, and I'll read Diana just because it's important. Diana is the ancient lady of the beasts. And here I do have the lady of the beasts right here, the lady of the beasts. Called by the Romans, Lucina, goddess of the light. As mistress of wild things, she's especially responsible for anything young and vulnerable, be it wild or human. She's a goddess of solitude comfortable with the wilderness and with the great silence of nature. Get out to nature, my friends. She represents the mystic, primitive identity of the hunter and the hunted. Diana is a moon goddess, symbolizing the moon in its crescent phase. She stands for the virgin, a self-sufficient free goddess who lives life on her own terms, especially a goddess of women. She is related to all phases of female existence, from infancy to menstruation, through birth 
nursing, menopause, and death. Diana stands for the part of us that is at home in the wilderness, at home with our primitive, instinctual nature. Beautiful. Well, that's what we've been talking about. Tap that intuition, my friends. Let's follow these moon cycles. That's what we have to do, male or female. And the Osiris card, Isis and Osiris. In ancient Egypt, Isis was among the oldest of the goddesses, the mother and giver of all life, a moon goddess. She gives birth to the sun, creates and sustains all life, and is the savior of all people, the teacher, the teacher of agriculture. She is also the goddess of medicine and wisdom. Osiris was her brother and husband. When Osiris was murdered by his brother Set, Isis reached for and found him, revived him, and conceived their son Horus. When Set again took Osiris and scattered his body in 14 pieces, Isis hunted down each piece except for his reproductive organs, which she was unable to locate in order to give each piece a proper burial. Isis is the universal goddess representing total femininity. She can overcome death itself, yet she is not above grief. One of her tears wept down when Osiris was dying caused the Nile River to flood. She underscores the depths of emotion that even a goddess must feel. And my, you know how I love my Isis. She just gave me her um, Phoenix card. She is my goddess and so is Venus. I think I've shared that, my friends, many times. And let us just show the love, people, and Diana, too. Love her. Well, my friends, thank you for watching a 50-minute video. Oh, my goodness. I hope